Hello and welcome to this special edition of the ACC Update. I'm Lisa Fletcher. September is Atrial Fibrillation Awareness Month. Atrial fibrillation, or AFib, is the most common sustained cardiac rhythm disturbance, affecting more than 2.2 million people in the U.S. Its debilitating effects can lead to stroke, heart failure, and other complications. Today, we are privileged to speak with Melanie True Hills, a patient advocate and AFib survivor who's been AFib free for more than seven years. She's also founder and CEO of the American Foundation for Women's Health, AFib Awareness Month, and stopafib.org. Melanie, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks, Lisa. So tell us, how did you come up with the idea of AFib Awareness Month? Well, when we launched StopAFib.org in April of 2007, I knew that atrial fibrillation was probably the most common unknown condition, and I knew that we needed to do something about it. So we designated September as Atrial Fibrillation Awareness Month. We celebrated it, and then we got it registered in the official register. The next summer, we joined with other organizations, such as the American College of Cardiology, American Heart Association, Heart Rhythm Society, and many patient and professional organizations, to ask Congress to declare it nationally as National Atrial Fibrillation Awareness Month, which the Senate did in September of 2009. We've since celebrated it every year and made a huge difference as a result of having Atrial Fibrillation Awareness Month. You've created a lot of awareness. Talk about some of the successes you've seen from it. Well, we've been very fortunate that as a result of Atrial Fibrillation Awareness Month, many organizations have used this month to raise awareness in their communities of atrial fibrillation. We've seen hospitals, we've seen industry, we've seen um, many professional or associations and organizations using this as an awareness month for those who need to know about this condition. It's a it's, it's such a serious condition and it can lead to strokes and it, we've been very successful in raising awareness. Over these five years, people have come from not knowing of atrial fibrillation, never having heard of it, to knowing what it is, what it feels like, and what they should do about it. So how can patients and their physicians get involved in uh, AFib Awareness Month? Patients and their physicians can tell others what atrial fibrillation is, what it feels like, and how to recognize it. Many people know that there are palpitations involved, but a lot of people don't have palpitations. They don't have anything that causes them to know that they have atrial fibrillation. But if they're starting to feel short of breath, uh, particularly walking upstairs or, you know, just things that normally wouldn't bother them, they should at least ask their physicians about uh, the possibility that they could have atrial fibrillation, particularly if they're having palpitations along with it. In addition, we want people to be aware of what the risks are from atrial fibrillation, such as stroke. Let me encourage those who are watching to come to stopafib.org to learn more about atrial fibrillation and what can be done about it. In addition, ask your members of Congress to support the atrial fibrillation resolution and also sign on with us to the Global AF Patient Charter, which is at signagaststroke.com. And this we're using to raise awareness with our policymakers about the condition and what needs to be done about it. I have a very strong passion around raising awareness of atrial fibrillation because I personally have been touched by stroke in my family and I almost had a stroke from atrial fibrillation on my very first episode. So wiping out strokes related to atrial fibrillation and helping people get their lives back is a passion with me and I hope it will be a passion with others who are aware of this condition and can tell others what can be done. Okay, finally, give us a little bit of your advice for physicians who are treating patients with AFib. Well, physicians have a real challenge because AFib is a very complex condition. So patients have so many questions for them. Let me encourage the physicians that are watching to send patients to stopafib.org to learn more about their condition so that patients 
can better partner with their healthcare team to solve this problem, to get it under control, and to prevent strokes caused by atrial fibrillation. That's stopafib.org and also the atrialfibrillationblog.com. Melanie, great of you to join us and share your insights. Thanks a lot for being on the show. Thank you. And for more information about Melanie True Hills and her organization's patient advocacy efforts, you can find it at stopafib.org. It's a great resource, really worth checking out. The ACC also offers a number of tools that can help patients better manage their AFib and provides a variety of resources that help physicians stay up to date on the latest news and topics related to AFib. Now, the ACC and the Heart Rhythm Society partner in the atrial fibrillation community on Cardiosource.org. The community offers a collaborative space that facilitates interaction between clinical disciplines and features an article of the month series, videos, case challenges, hot topics, and more. The ACC's Lifelong Learning Division recently launched a New Era 2.0 a free performance improvement continuing medical education activity designed to help physicians advance their methods of care for AFib patients. By participating, clinicians can fulfill their ABIM Cardio 4 MOC requirement and gain access to point of care tools and other resources. Now, the Pinnacle Registry platform, Pinnacle AF, focuses on atrial fibrillation and the next generation of anticoagulants. The platform allows physicians to track data of patients with AFib it also features additional data elements, including renal function, bleed risks, and events. The college's CardioSmart initiative empowers healthcare professionals and their patients to partner effectively to achieve better cardiovascular outcomes. CardioSmart offers an AFib condition center for patients with a history of the disease. It provides them with the key facts, questions to ask doctors, and a lot more. The ACC Atrial Fibrillation Toolkit equips the patient care team with tools and strategies to support high-quality care for patients with AFib. The toolkit establishes clear goals for the patient and the patient care team. And in addition to the AFib Toolkit, recently updated AFib practice guidelines can be found published online in JAK. That's all for this edition of the ACC Update. Continue to tune into CardioSource for future ACC updates and all the latest news from your college. I'm Lisa Fletcher. Thanks for watching.